Hello, my name is Anne-Marie Larson. I am a senior journalism major and my emphasis is in writing and publishing. And this is my presentation. It is called Voice for the Voiceless and Face for the Faceless. And that's a fancy way of saying media representation. And I chose that particular title because Voice for the Voiceless is a phrase that I hear often within Biola's journalism department. And I wanted to figure out more of what that meant and connect a face to the voice because that's important. So what is media representation? As I explained, I combined voice with the voiceless and face for the faceless. But the official definition is the way the media portrays specific groups, communities, ideas from a particular perspective. And one big way that we can see this is in movies where it often portrays negative stereotypes, whether it's portraying a Native American person as an ignorant savage or an Asian person as like the karate master, that's all examples of this. And so media representation within journalism, there are big implications because what stories are we covering and whose stories are those? So as we know, media is powerful. And it's the stories of the media that tell us a reflection of reality, not reality exactly, but a version of it. And it normalizes our lives. So you see something on TV or read about it, and if you resonate with it, it creates a comforting feeling because you're like, hey, I do that too. And it makes you feel like you're not such a freak after all because there's people who do the same thing. What is that? So the relatability and shared experience that, that happens through media is valuable. And so if you are a minority and you don't see or hear about people like you, it's like, do you even exist? And I am advocating for more media representation that would be like a math textbook or any textbook from elementary school. I don't know about you guys, but my textbook always had a wide variety of to people in them. So as journalists, we have a responsibility to wield our power wisely to advocate for the disadvantaged. So I present to you 11-year-old Marley Diaz. You may have seen her circulating on your Facebook feed a while ago. She is an avid reader and in school she was reading a lot of books and most of the main characters were white boys or white boys and their dogs. And black girls like her were never the main character, or very rarely. So she wanted to see more girls like her, and so she made it her goal to collect 1,000 books with black girls as the main character, and since has collected 4,000 books and counting, which is awesome. But the lack of representation of black girls in children's literature is a prevalent problem and fewer than 10% of children's books released in 2015 had a black person as the main character, which is significant. That's a really small number. So there's a saying, if she can't see it, she can't do it, meaning that if you don't know what options exist for you, how are you supposed to go do them? So it's reassuring to see people things doing the things you want to do, so whenever I see bylines by women in newspapers, I think that's awesome. And you go girl, and it feels good because I know I'm not f forging the path on my own and that I can stand on other people's shoulders. And I feel like there's more feelings of a pre-existing support system. So I wouldn't want to be the only woman at a video game design company because I would get sick and tired of saying, women don't actually look like that and can you please stop treating women as sex objects? That would just be the most tiresome, repetitive thing ever. Um, so that is a tweet that I saw during some of my many hours spent on the internet and Twitter. And it says, person designing male orc. Okay, tusks, leathery skin, super buff, battle scars, person designing female orc. And then it's just the same hot girl, but green. So here are some statistics regarding gender equality because everyone loves a slide full of statistics. And these are all from 
the Women's Center report on how many women are being hired, seen, and heard in American journalism and entertainment. So the answer to that is they are not being seen or heard much, or as much as they should be, and definitely not on par with men. So women make up, oh, and the statistics are all from 2013. So women make up 36.3% of newsroom staffers, 27% of opinion columnists, and male sources are quoted three times as frequently as female ones in front page stories in the New York Times, which that was new information to me. I was surprised. And then as far as behind the scenes, women's representation hasn't increased in 15 years, and they make up 16% of writers, directors, editors, and producers in the 250 top domestic grossing films in 2013. And the lack of representation is bad because then these, like the world is missing out on these women's ideas because they aren't in the places to be able to contribute them. So no one hears about them and we're missing out. So white allyship, also known as, should I, a white woman, write about what Beyonce's Lemonade means. For those of you who don't know what Lemonade is, that's Beyonce's latest album. It came out a couple days ago and lit the internet on fire. Everyone's talking about it. And so naturally people wanna write think pieces on it and just like break it down and talk about it. So while white people can do like a review or like say how great it is, they should not be deconstructing or, or assessing it straight off the bat because they just don't have the knowledge to be able to do that. And it, just to like connect it to Black Lives Matter, it's like you, you don't know what you're doing. Um, so instead of just like saying, I know, I will take to my keyboard and write up my brilliant think piece on why Beyonce hates the police, you should step back and consume the dozens of takes and pieces from smart and sharp black writers and critics. And if you, excuse me, and then if you're offered the assignment, you can recommend a black colleague for the assignment. And if you don't know where to find and read pieces by black writers, or you don't have black colleagues, what even makes you think you would be qualified to write about it in the first place? Because it's misinformed and ignorant. So if you do want to write about it, you should wait a little bit and read all the sharp takes. And then if you still want to now offer analysis, you can have a more nuanced and informed approach because hopefully you learned from all the articles that you read. So how does this apply to me, a young pre-professional, hopefully entering the writing world? Uh, so this past year, I've been the point editor in chief, which is the on-campus magazine. And that's been really great. And I had made it a goal to get more diversity into the magazine. And that's something I advocated for as a story editor last year because I noticed that it wasn't very diverse. And so I brought that up to that editor-in-chief. But then I thought, now as editor-in-chief this year, like this is my opportunity to make a difference. And it just didn't happen, at least to the extent that I wanted it to. There's a white guy on the cover. Great photo, beautiful photo. Um, but even in, in the issue that we're putting out now, it, the photo editor did tell photographers to try and photograph more diverse people, but they didn't and th they're already behind and can't tell them to reshoot. So another place that I have seen media representation take place is when I had my advancement internship through Biola last semester. And what advancement is, is it's basically promoting the university in such a way as to elicit donations. And I worked on the I Have the Courage campaign. And my within my internship, I w was to seek out unique stu standout student stories and then interview them and tell their story. And my supervisor actually told me to look for more male stories, which I thought was interesting given the Biola ratio, because I guess they already had too many ones about girls. But 
So went and did that, it was great. And then you can see around campus the different walls with the, all the different people. I'm on one of them, don't look at it, it's not a good picture. <laughs> and as I talked about, uh, I wanna be a writer and it would just be going back to what I explained on the lemonade slide about being just really conscious about what assignments I'm taking and how I approach them. And my interest in this topic began shortly after high school and since then it's been a process of reading a lot of information and consuming that to broaden my perspectives because it's, like I said earlier, having more perspectives is incredibly valuable because otherwise we're shortchanging ourselves and we are missing out on all the great thoughts that people have. And so in conclusion, diverse voices allow for more perspectives other than the mainstream and telling diverse stories is an important step toward equality and accepting and celebrating everybody.